Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just a small clarification to start with. I'm the Director of Network Management. Um, the Managing Director of Surface Transport apologises. He can't be here. He's with the Mayor at the moment, dealing with one of our top priorities, which is finance. Um, so I thought I'd set out um, some of the city context, the London context, around our uh, mobility priorities. So these for us are, are clearly defined in the uh, Mayor's Transport Strategy. There are three strands there. Healthy people and healthy streets, how do we encourage much more active travel? Good public transport experience, so how do we encourage people to use public transport? How do we make it more sustainable? And crucially, how do we increase our fare books through the public transport experience? And how do we deliver new homes and jobs? So how do we have high density mixed use places that really work for the city? And they're the three main priorities that we have in London. They're the things that we really have to deliver to ensure that we can really have a mobile, sustainable population. But alongside that, we have a number of challenges in London. We have a growing population. London's still growing. It's growing by approximately two trains, two trains full of people each week, which is enormous growth when you think about it. We have an air quality challenge. We are absolutely over our toxicity, the legal levels of toxicity within the city, and we have to do something urgently about that. We also have financial constraints, really, really tight financial constraints in London. How do we cover London's transport costs through income where the population's growing and our government grants are significantly reducing? And then how do we adapt to the changing technology landscape? We've seen disruptive uh, technology in action in London's transport sy uh, system. There's a well-publicized case with, uh, with Uber. How do we adopt quickly and make the most out of those changes in disruptive technology. But we also need to make our streets safer. And that's a, a real strand of work and energy within Transport for London and across the whole of the London transport sector. We have a really bold target that there'll be no one killed or seriously injured on London's roads by 2041. And there'll be no one killed or seriously injured by a bus in London by 2030. Now, that's a long way out, but that's a really ambitious target and we are doing everything we can to meet that. And any technological advances really need to help us achieve that really strong, hard target. So what does that really look like? Well, if you pick a bit of uh, traffic, uh, highway infrastructure, and I'm a traffic light geek, so I'm gonna pick traffic lights. Um, how does that all come together? Well, if you take your humble set of traffic lights, what do we need to do? Well, we need to start rephasing the traffic lights. We need to start really optimizing those signals for pedestrians, for cyclists, putting them at the forefront of our optimization as opposed to vehicles, which has traditionally been there. We also need to look at much better public transport priority at our signals. We have bus priority in London. Can we have differential bus priority? Can we start optimizing for full buses? Can we start optimizing for buses that are late and full, really adding intelligence into our optimization at traffic signals? We also need to deal with that day-to-day -day increase in demand at those signals. So as well as doing extra with them, changing the priorities, we need to really focus on how do we deal with more people for a constrained, tight space. And we need to make them safer. We need to make them much safer so nobody gets hurt anywhere near our traffic signals. And I'd argue that we do that sooner than the rest of the links on the road network. But alongside that, we need to look to the future. We need to look at uh, autonomous vehicles, connected vehicles. Are traffic lights going to be there? We have to have that eye to the future. So just by taking that small bit of infrastructure on our highway network, you can see how all these challenges come together and really you know, provide us with something to focus on. So, those challenges do also give, us, give rise to, to opportunities for us. Um, and I guess the question really is, how do we use processes to harness the opportunities rather than see them as threats? And I think that's something that we haven't necessarily traditionally done um, as transport authorities, and that's something we nearly, really need to concentrate on if we're going to meet our, our modal priorities. So, thank you. <laughs> 